Hi, welcome back. My name's Hannah and I've got Joel with me today. And we're going to be talking about what we wish we had known before starting our job search in Dubai. And we both moved to Dubai about seven years ago mm -hmm. and have worked in recruitment since then and in helping people find their jobs. And I think there's a lot of things that we both realized that we did wrong in that initial job search. So we want to share a lot of that with you and hopefully you won't make the same mistakes that we did. Okay, so Joel, what's the first thing that you wish you had known before moving to Dubai and looking for a job? I think the first thing, the biggest thing for me was when I arrived, I believed that applying for the most jobs I possibly could would just increase my chances of, of getting a job as quickly as possible. I remember sitting in, I think it was Dubai Mall in Tim Hortons, drinking tons of French vanilla and applying for literally every single job that came up, which I thought I might suit, um, even if it didn't really fit my expertise. And I would sit there on all the job boards and just hit refresh and see what came up. And as soon as something came up, I would hit apply. Because uh, I think I also thought that if I was the first to apply for a role, I'd be more likely to be seen by the recruiter or the hiring manager and called for interview. Yeah, I totally did that too. I applied for everything, even if it had one word which matched what I was looking for. And I think I thought that if recruiters saw my name a lot, even if I wasn't right for the role, it would mean they would be thinking of me as a candidate yeah. and maybe they would have other roles for me. But once I worked in recruitment, I realized that it just doesn't work like that. No, in um, fact, the opposite is completely yeah. true. I, what I realized in the end was, and later on when I was working in recruitment, a targeted approach is much more likely to actually find me a job. And so when I finally decided on what it was I wanted to do, which was ultimately to get into recruitment, I was then able to apply literally for the roles that were recruitment roles. And that tar targeted approach ultimately got me the job that I wanted. Yeah. So we wish that we had known not to apply for every single thing, but to narrow our search criteria, spend the time on those specific roles, and you're much more likely to get a job that way. One thing I really wish I had known was that it's so important to tailor your CV for each job that you apply for, which is much easier to do when you're applying for fewer jobs. And it's much better to have a CV that really matches to the job you're applying for rather than a generic CV that you're just sending everywhere. Yeah. And I think if I'd realized that sooner, I would have stood better chances of finding a job here in Dubai. But the problem is, someone like Dubai, and probably in most cities around the world actually, people think these days that job boards are your only or your best option of finding a job. The reality is because everybody thinks that, mm. everybody's using job boards. And they're so easy as well. You can just upload your CV, see the job, click apply, and it takes seconds. Mm. And that's the problem. You end up applying to every mm. single job with the CV that you've previously uploaded to that job board. And so your same CV goes for every role and it's not tailored in any way to the job that you're actually going for. So the best thing to do is if you find a job that really excites you, that matches your skills and experience, is to review your CV for that role. Mm. Make sure that your CV is including all of the relevant experience you have for that particular position that that experience is really highlighted on your CV. Mm. So it's right there at the top, it grabs the person's attention. And then see if you can find the person who is hiring for that role and email them your CV directly with even a little note to say, this is why I think I'm such a good fit yeah. for this role. And it takes a bit more time, but the results are going to be so much better if you do that rather than just hitting apply, 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 apply with the same generic CV. So another thing I wish I'd realized when I first moved to Dubai to find a job is that there are recruiters in the city and actually in any major city who do specialize in different industries. So if you're looking for a job in um, healthcare, 
there will be recruiters in Dubai who will specialize in that industry. And you're able to work with maybe one, two, or maybe maximum three recruiters to find the jobs that really do match your expertise and help you to get the CV directly to the hiring manager. Yeah, that's such a good piece of advice because not only can these recruiters get your CV in front of the right people, mm. but especially if you're relocating from another country like we did, they are such a valuable source of information. Yeah. Um, they will know what the average salaries are for your role. They'll be able to tell you whether your skill set is in demand or whether your chances are really very slim of finding a job in mm -hmm. the industry that you're looking for. So, you know, before you even start applying in another country, if you can reach out to a recruiter who is a specialist, yeah. who can give you that advice and really guide you in the right direction. Do you know what else I wish I had known? is to get a local number as soon as possible. Definitely. I don't know how many days I left it, but it definitely wasn't the first thing on my list mm -hmm. to go to the mall and get a Dubai number. But it's really important to do that because it shows that you are indeed on the ground. Yeah. It also makes you a lot more contactable by recruiters or hiring managers and I remember being quite nervous to use my phone because it was costing me so much money. Spending time just wherever there was Wi-Fi. Um, but as soon as you've got a local number, local minutes, you're able to do your job searching on the go. And it's just a really important thing to do right away. And it's really easy. In Dubai, it means going down to your local mall, take your passport with you because you will yeah. need ID because your number will be registered to you and just get a pay-as-you-go SIM. You don't even have to sign up for a contract and then you're good to go. The reality is in a city like Dubai, uh, the best jobs come through relationships and through networking. It's just kind of how it works. And I think what we realized after a while out here is that because a majority of the population is an expat, everybody's moved from somewhere, People remember what it's like to move here from a foreign country, to have no friends or family around, and they're open to having a coffee with you and sitting down and chatting. The job I took in the end was with a friend that I started to get to know when I first moved here. Three months down the line, I ended up working with him and his company. If you move to a country like the UAE or move to a city like Dubai, begin to think about who you already know on the ground get in touch with them or look at who's already in your LinkedIn network, find their number or their email address and offer to take them for a coffee just to chat to them. Since then I've seen statistics even about how hiring managers and companies prefer to hire people who have been referred to them. Mm. When someone's been referred to you uh, by someone that you trust, you're much more likely to instantly like that person and want to consider mm. hiring them and helping them. Yeah, that's true. So you really need to utilize your network. So even if it's a weak link, and not someone that you know very well, any point of connection that you can find can really, really help mm. just to make that approach and get that referral into a business. One thing I really wish I'd realized earlier on is how important LinkedIn is in finding a job. And I wish that I'd set up my LinkedIn account sooner um, and started building my network in Dubai sooner. Because it's huge in Dubai, LinkedIn. I mean, yeah. everybody uses it. Yeah, and that's one of the first place companies are going to look if they're looking for somebody. So it's really important that you have an up-to-date LinkedIn profile, but also that you're connected in with lots of people in the region you're applying for. So what's quite easy to happen is to have a really great pool of connections in your home country but not have that same network mm. in the country you're applying for. And it can take quite a lot of time to build that up. So if you're thinking of relocating in six months or a year, now is a really good time to start laying that groundwork, start linking in with people in that country that you yeah. want to be based at, so that when you do eventually decide to move and start making those approaches, you're already connected to a lot more people, mm. 
which means a lot more people are second connections. Yeah. And LinkedIn doesn't let you reach out to third connections. So you really want as many first and second connections as possible. And you know, if you're not sure how to do this, there's lots of people that can help you with your LinkedIn page. I offer that service. There's other people out there who can show you how to do it and how to make sure that recruiters can find you on LinkedIn and can teach you how to network on LinkedIn as well. Mm. So when you send your LinkedIn request, there's an option to add a personal note. You only have 300 characters, so it's not much, but it's enough just to give the reason why you're linking in with yeah. them. And again, although it's more work, I think that's the overall message of this video is that it's better to spend more time on these approaches, mm. be more thoughtful about your job search rather than having a scattergun approach where Definitely. you're just putting lots of things out there and hoping for the best. I think the last thing I wish I kind of know and we wish we'd known when we moved here is that being prepared to negotiate mm. your salary offer is normal. It is part of the process. Yeah, I think especially when you're relocating to another country, you feel like you don't really want to ask for too much because you're just grateful that you've got a job offer. But in Dubai, everybody negotiates. Companies expect that when they make you an offer. So usually they will offer a bit lower than what they have in mind that they're going to pay you. So if you don't ask, you don't get. And the worst thing that can happen is that they say no, but the original offer will still, still be stands. available yeah. to you. And that's where the research really helps because if you can go to them and say, you know, I've done my research, this is what the average is for my industry, for mm. someone with my years of experience and put that case to them, that's going to be a really strong place to negotiate from. So, you know, when you're negotiating, it's not about, well, you know, I've got my eye on this really expensive apartment, so I need more money. It's not about why you want more, but it's about what you're bringing to the company and why that is worth more to them and what is fair. Mm. So that's the place that you should come from when you're negotiating. It's not always about the cash that you're paid either. Mm. Here in Dubai, the full benefits package is, is often more complicated than it is in other countries. So they may or may not pay your kids education, for example, or there may be different levels of health care that you can get. And sometimes companies are prepared to pay sign-on bonuses, even if they're not able to push your basic salary higher. So it's worth asking for these things. It's worth thinking outside of the box and it's worth getting some advice from an expert as well when you come to negotiate. So we really hope that you found this video helpful mm. and that by sharing some of the things that we wish we had known and some of the ways that we went wrong in our job search that you can avoid those mistakes. And look, if you've got any other questions, perhaps something that you wish we had covered in this video, then Just drop them in the comments, them in the comments below. below. We will be checking those comments, answering any questions that you have. And you know, if there's any other topics that you want us to cover, then let us know as well. So I really want to wish you all the best out there and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.